Let's look at sex-linked genes and how we write them because it's definitely different than the way we were writing alleles when we first started our class, which, wow, can you believe it was been eight weeks ago? Um, so we used to have like brown hair would be capital B and blonde hair would be lowercase b um, and we would mix it up like that. That's great when you're just working with regular autosomes, regular genes. Uh, but we're working with sex chromosomes now. We're working with sex-linked genes, so it's quite a bit different. We know that in order for an organism to be female, it has to have two X chromosomes. And in order for an organism to be male, it has to have an X and a Y chromosome. Uh, we also have already learned that the, the gene for colorblindness is only found on the X chromosome. It's not found on the Y chromosome. So it's only on the X. So when we're looking at a female, she's going to have two X's, which means she's going to have an allele for that gene on each of those chromosomes. We're going to represent it with um, a, like a superscript, um, kind of like an exponent type thing. Uh, and it's going to be C for colorblind. If it's a capital C, that means that's the dominant form. And the dominant form of this gene is normal, okay? No color blindness. If the allele is a lowercase c, the recessive form, that means that the recessive form has the potential to make that organism be color blind. So let's go through and see how each of these work. So first up, our phenotype is a normal female. Well, if we have a female, we already know that our genotype has to be XX. For the sex chromosome part. Okay, now let's look at our sex linked genes for color blindness. She's normal. That means she has a capital C, capital C, two dominant alleles, one linked to each sex chromosome. She's normal, no color blindness at all. Next up, we have something called a carrier female. Okay, so on this one, this was a homozygous dominant female that was producing a normal phenotype. But now we see we have a capital C dominant on one X chromosome and a lowercase recessive on the other X chromosome. If you remember back, this is what we called heterozygous, two different alleles, a capital and a lowercase, a dominant and a recessive on these chromosomes. Now her phenotype will actually be normal. She will not have color blindness. But we call her a carrier because she's carrying a mutation. And the mutation is this recessive gene. It doesn't show up in her because she has this dominant to mask it. But she does carry it and has the ability to pass it down to her offspring. Next, let's look at a colorblind female. Again, colorblind females are only about one out of every 100 in the United States. So two X chromosomes and each will have a little C attached to it, lowercase, recessive allele for each one, homozygous, the same, lowercase, lowercase, recessive. So there is no dominant allele here to express itself. There's only recessive. So this female will be colorblind. All right. Now, normal male. We know if we have a male, we have to have an X and a Y. Again, colorblindness gene is only associated, only linked onto the X chromosome. So on the X chromosome, we see that this is a normal male. He has a capital C, that's the dominant form. He only has one allele that will show up. He doesn't have two like this female, right? So if he has a capital, he's dominant and he's normal. The end. There's no heterozygous, there's no homozygous, just has one capital on one gene, he ends up normal. Now let's look at a colorblind male. Again, a male, so we have XY. However, this is a colorblind male. So he's going to have a lowercase recessive C linked with his X chromosome. Normally, we know that we have to have two recessive alleles in order for a trait to show up as recessive. But a male only has one X chromosome for that to be on. So if he has one recessive on it, guess what? He's colorblind. And again, nothing on the Y. So let's see how this works in a Punnett square. 
So we're going to cross a normal male with a carrier female. We know that this has to be the male here because we have an X and a Y. He's normal. He has a capital C. Boom, there's our male. Now we're going to cross with a carrier female. Carrier female is going to be heterozygous. It's going to have two X's because it's a female. And it's going to be heterozygous because she's a carrier. So she's going to have a capital dominant C and a lowercase recessive C. And when we cross them, we see here that we're going to get um, a female XX and a female here XX and a male here XY and a male here XY. We've already done that. We know that we get 50-50, 50% and 50%, half and half, uh, when we do our Punnett squares with a male and a female. But now we have to look at the alleles that are attached to the X chromosomes. Um, here we have a capital C, capital C, so we have a normal female. Here we have a capital C on the X, only one. All we know is that this is capital C, that's dominant, so this is a normal male. Here we have a capital C from the father and a lowercase c from the mother. This is a carrier female. She's heterozygous, dominant, okay? So she appears to be normal. She does not have color blindness, but she does carry that gene. Uh, for the mutation, for the recessive colorblind mutation. Now the last one is a male XY um, and gets the lowercase recessive colorblindness gene from the mother and guess what? He's colorblind. Okay, so that's the offspring when we cross a normal male with a carrier female. So you see how the carrier female, um, even though she's completely normal and the, and the male is completely normal, don't have colorblindness, they're able to produce a colorblind male. Um, out of this because the female is carrying this allele. Now let's look over at crossing a colorblind male with a carrier female. This is how you get that really rare um, combination of a colorblind female because we have our male um, XY. He is colorblind so we have a lowercase recessive C attached to his X chromosome and over here we have the mom two X chromosomes, she's going to have a dominant capital C and a lowercase recessive C. When we cross these two, they both have the lowercase C, we get XX, so we get a female, they're both lowercase, that's homozygous recessive, that's going to give us a colorblind female. Over here we get an X and a Y uh, with a lowercase C, we're going to get a colorblind male out of this. Again, if he has one lowercase recessive, he's going to show for colorblind. Uh, then we're going to cross these two. We're going to get a, a female because we have X and X. She's going to have one dominant gene from the mother, one recessive gene from the father. So she's going to be a carrier female. She is going to show as normal, not be colorblind at all. She's heterozygous for this trait, but she is carrying the mutated gene here and could pass it down to the offspring. And the last offspring from a colorblind male with a carrier female is going to produce um, an X with a capital C and a Y. Capital C is dominant, normal, so we end up with a normal male. And this is how the sex-linked genes work.